Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports and Songs Podcast. We're on Season 5, Episode number 25. Tonight's show is the Sports Edition. Today is April 26th, 2024. The show tonight will basically be what you're looking at. The NFL Draft. The NFL Draft is held in Detroit this year, April 25th, 26th, and 27th. What we'll do for the tonight's show is cover a recap of the first round only. Cover the recap of round one. And then uh, get into the specifics of what's going to happen here Friday and Saturday. Today's Friday, so we'll cover what happened on round one of the draft, and we'll go through the picks. We'll go through the picks here. Number one, the Bears got their quarterback, Caleb Williams. Second round pick is Jaden Daniels here as the quarterbacks went early. Jaden Daniels from LSU went to the Commanders. Drake May from North Carolina. Ended up with the Patriots. Then the first receiver went off the board. Marvin Harrison went to the Cardinals. And the number five overall pick, Joe Alt, a local kid from Notre Dame, went to the Chargers. Now, Joe Alt is a Minnesota kid, went to Totino Grace High School, uh, grew up with his family in North Oaks, Minnesota. All very good athletes, sports athletes. The father played for the Chiefs in the NFL. So Joe is going to go to the Chargers as a five overall pick. Very good. Big kid there. His brother is in the NHL playing hockey. His older sister, uh, I think, believe they played basketball at Denver University. All very good sport athletes there, but this will be a name to watch. Joe Alt should be good. Um, The brother, and I think the older sister as well, went to Creighton-Durham Hall. High school, so not necessarily Totino Grace, but that's where Joe Alt went. Number six pick was a receiver also. The Giants got neighbors. Pick number seven, another offensive tackle, this time out of Alabama. Latham went to the Tennessee Titans. Eighth pick, Falcons chose to go with Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. Now, that was very interesting. Keep in mind the Falcons did sign Kirk Cousins to a multi-year Hundred plus million dollar contract to be their quarterback for four. I think it's a four year deal. Um, no one was really expecting Penix to go to the Falcons or the Falcons to draft any quarterback for that matter, but they did. And so we'll see how that shakes out. The Bears, with their second pick in the first round draft, was the receiver out of Washington as well, uh, with Rome Adunze going there. Two back to back picks out of Washington. Receiver there going to the Bears, their first. Uh, Two of the top nine overall picks are going to the Bears. Should be fun to watch. The Vikings. The Vikings moved up. They were in the 11th spot, moved up, and switched places with the Jets, but paid a heavy price for it. Now, the Jets were not going to be picking a quarterback anyway. They they had their eye on some offensive linemen. I believe it went this way, that the Jets were saying, look, we have trade talks. People want to trade us the pick. And we're open to anything. And the Vikings management um, said, you know what, there's a a risk there that they may trade to someone who's going to take a quarterback. And so they thought that risk was enough to say, let's let's move up and take that. But keep in mind now that pick, that 10 pick versus 11 pick on the on the pay grade, the bonus pay, it's about a they grade that up. It's about a million dollars more on a bonus. It's about a million dollars more. Uh, it, it's big dollars on the contract to do that just to move up one spot. But they needed it, so they grabbed McCarthy, which I'm surprised fell all the way down there anyway. They also had Bo Nix. Both of them could have fallen. And so what the Vikings could have done is just leave the pick alone, let the Jets make their pick, and then pick who's ever left. If, if someone came in and grabbed McCarthy, then they could have picked Bo Nix. But they wanted McCarthy, so they went out and grabbed him. Now, in exchange... They gave the Jets the 11 pick. They also gave the Jets a four and a five pick. Our fourth round pick and fifth round pick for the Vikings went to the Jets. And in exchange, they threw us a sixth round pick. So a steep price to pay. Some uh, some suggest the Vikings overpaid for that. I'm guessing, uh, just an opinion here myself, if they offered the Jets a fourth round pick, they probably would have said yes to do that. Uh, But they also gave them a fifth round and then we got a sixth round. So Jets more likely came out better deal on that. But the McCarthy now will be the Vikings quarterback of the future. 
We'll see how that shakes out as well. That should be very good. The Jets get their guy in Penn State offensive, um, Penn State offensive tackle. So that's the first 11, first 11 picks. Let's go to the next one here. Number 12, let's go down to Denver. They pick up Bo Nix, quarterback from the Oregon Ducks. So there's there goes that run on the quarterbacks, ends there with Nix in the first round. Very offensive, heavy draft picks uh, thus far. Now we get into draft pick number 13. The Raiders go after a tight end from the Georgia Bulldogs. Number 14, the Saints get an offensive tackle from the Oregon State Beavers. 15, edge rusher from UCLA. The Colts get Mr. Alatu. Seattle's next at 16. They get a defensive tackle from the Texas Longhorns. The Vikings now move up to number 17. They do a trade with Jacksonville to move up to that 17 spot to get Dallas Turner, an edge rusher from Alabama. He was expected to go much higher. The Vikings had him much higher. Most drafts on the mock drafts had Dallas Turner going much higher. So in order to move up to get him, once again, great pick. Both the Vikings' first-round picks are, I think, two picks they never – probably even imagine they'd even have both of them. Now they got them both, but they paid the price. They uh, switched with Jacksonville. Jacksonville also got our fifth round draft pick. And then what we gave them, the Vikings gave them for next year in 2025, our third and fourth round draft picks then also. So one pick this year, two picks next year, and then we got a sixth round pick in 2024 from the Jags. One could argue the Jags came out looking much better on that as well. Fair enough. I could agree with that. They probably did come out looking better, but the Vikings get who they wanted and they weren't too, too concerned about getting a bunch of those middle picks. They're going to be paying for these paying big bucks for these two first round picks. Uh, so maybe in an effort to, to save some money, let those middle picks go. And then they stocked up on a bunch of the later round picks. Interesting to see that happen. But anyway, a great pickup to get Dallas Turner. The Bengals are next. Got an offensive tackle from Georgia and a 19th pick, an edge rusher from Florida State. Rounding out the top 20, another tackle from Washington for the Steelers. So now we get into picks 21 to 30. 21 to 30. Closing out the first round. The Thursday night of the NFL draft, since they went to this new format, is only first round only. So they start this at 7 o'clock, I believe, and they go through and take as long as it takes to get the first round done with each team getting 15 minutes in between picks to make their selection. Dolphins went with an edge rusher from Penn State. Eagles were next, picked up a quarter a cornerback from Toledo. Jaguars in that trade with Minnesota still ended up getting the receiver they wanted in LSU. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr., good pick. Everybody wins there for that. Detroit Lions, cornerback from Alabama, Terry and Arnold. Green Bay Packers are next. They picked up a lineman from Arizona. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the 26th spot picked up a center from Duke. Arizona Cardinals get a defensive end from Missouri following their trade with Houston. And then number 28, Xavier Worthy, Kansas City Chiefs. The Texas Longhorn receiver is going to go to Kansas City the Super Bowl champion. Dallas Cowboys picked up Oklahoma offensive tackle Tyler Guyton and the Baltimore Ravens cornerback out of Clemson, Nate Wiggins. Last two picks here, both wide receivers. 31st and 32nd overall pick. The 49ers get Ricky Pearsall out of Florida Gators, wide receiver. And Carolina gets Xavier Leggett. South Carolina Gamecocks after that trade there with uh, involving both Kansas City ending up in Buffalo and Carolina. Carolina gets that pick to end out the first round. So the first round is complete. That's the way that picks fell because it's a full weekend once again in Detroit. It's a three-day affair. First round, Thursday. Friday, which is tonight, events become begin at 6 p.m. Central Time for the local Minnesota fans here. 6 p.m. in Detroit will be televised. This will be rounds two and three only. Rounds two and three only. Now, the Vikings don't have a pick in two or three. 
So for the Viking fans out there, um, there's nothing to do, nothing to watch for tonight. Now, that being said, there still could be trades where draft picks are flipped and flopped, and we may end up getting a second or a third round pick. I don't see that happening, so I think we got the night off, which means Saturday, Saturday is rounds four, five, six, and seven. Now, they go much quicker. There's less time in between them. This on Saturday starts at 11 a.m. Central Time. All these rounds, they whip by pretty quick. Rounds four, five, six, seven. Vikings have one pick in round four. Then you'll wait again until round six comes around. And then they've got two in round six. The first pick in that round and the 27th pick. And then to round out the day, the final round, they get picks number 10 and 12 in round seven. So still five picks to go for the Minnesota Vikings, uh, picking up some of those on those trades. We're also losing a couple in next year's draft because of how we moved up to get some of these guys here. But this should be fun to watch. Once again, televised on ESPN. Good to watch. They provide good analysis as well. Uh, the next step then is... Once the draft is completed, once the draft is done on Saturday, and then everyone then that has not been selected or picked then will become an undrafted free agent. As of that point, then teams can talk, discuss, and pick up and sign these players. Uh, first come, first serve for the remaining players. And that's another uh, way to, to get additional talent on your squad, uh, picking up additional free agents for the positions that you need a little extra depth in. And that's it. Next thing you know, it'll be uh, training camp time come July and August, training camp for the NFL NFL season. Now, for other sports going on here in Minnesota, the Minnesota Twins are on a weekend road trip to the L.A. Angels. They'll play tonight and Saturday and Sunday on the road. The nice thing is that they go back then to Chicago after playing Chicago a four-game series that they swept at Target Field, four straight games they won. They go now to the south side of Chicago, play three more games there against the Major League Baseball's worst team. We're trying to get as many wins as we can here piled up uh, here over the weekend. So it will be nice to get to two out of three maybe against the Angels and two out of three against the White Sox. So we'll see how that goes. The NBA First round playoffs, game three tonight, Minnesota Timberwolves at Phoenix Suns. That's game three. Minnesota has a two-game to zero advantage. That's all I've got for today's show. Tune in to the NFL Draft. Once again, ESPN and the NFL Network.